Why Heinrich von Treitschke was popular in his time is a mystery to me. I mean, granted, his writings are kind of mesmerizing in their own way, like a car crash you can't take your eyes off, if you'll forgive the criminally cliché comparison. I'm not that imaginative. But yeah, this guy's opinions were pretty damn stupid. Before we get to his views, however, let me fill you in on this interesting fellow's backstory, in case you don't know it yet. Heinrich von Treitschke was a German historian, journalist, essayist and member of parliament who lived from 1834 to 1896. Born into a family with a strong military background, he was originally a liberal and an opponent of the radically conservative Prussian Chancellor Otto von Bismarck, but his 180-degree political pivot came with the success of Bismarck's militarist policies, as three victorious wars against Denmark, Austria and France led to the establishment of a unified Germany, with Prussia at its head as a new major European power. Von Treitschke's newfound passion for the military shines through with glaring brightness in his work. In a moment he had been transformed from a progressive to an ardent nationalist and monarchist with a heart full of love for war and a scornful disdain for all nations except the German one. In 1871 he entered the German parliament as an MP for the National Liberal Party. So now that we've got his personal details out of the way, let's get to the subject of this video, his political philosophy. The man was a widely recognized intellectual, after all, so I read chapter one of his book Politics, which is a collection of lectures published in 1911. In this chapter he outlines his theory of a state. Let's delve right in as I summarize what I found out about his ideas. Von Treitschke sees a state as a people legally united as an independent entity, which is a phrase he repeats several times throughout the chapter. This carries several implications with it. Firstly, it means a rejection of the Enlightenment idea of natural law, i.e. rules of government derived directly from reason and therefore universal. Von Treitschke emphasizes the individual differences between all states, which are necessary because of the differences in the characters of the various peoples. However, according to this book, there are certain rules which hold true everywhere throughout history. One such rule is that societies naturally tend towards aristocracy as opposed to other forms of government. Von Treitschke explains this by saying that people are naturally different, and therefore inequality among them is natural, and therefore systems of government based on inequality are natural. No society, he maintains, can exist which is not divided into classes. You can see why this guy was vehemently opposed to social democracy. And it's not just within countries that inequality is inevitable. Although Treitschke does remark that all people are brothers, as they are all made in God's image, he goes on to use the natural inequalities between people to explain this time, quote, the subordination of some groups to others. This, of course, fits nicely with his expressed desire to see Germany acquire its own colonies overseas. He also asserts that each nation deserves what it gets, meaning that if one country is subjugated by another, it's the subjugated country's fault for being too weak to defend itself. As to the functions of the state, von Treitschke sees its main purposes in, firstly, the administration of justice, and, secondly, war. However, it is clear that its functions are not limited to these two aspects, since elsewhere he refers to another one, namely the, quote, duty to stand above social antagonisms. Here he takes a view similar to Thomas Hobbes's justification of a strong state as a peacekeeper among fundamentally immoral men. Von Treitschke believes that the conflicts which invariably arise within societies would lead to aggression, violence and the destruction of society, if not for the state, which is there to protect the rights of people. But there's no reason to be afraid that the state could ever disappear, because according to the book, a community of people without a state is impossible. States arise from human communities as naturally as does language. Here we see an unmistakable Aristotelian influence, since Aristotle also believed that a human community naturally and necessarily forms a polis. 
Indeed, von Treitschke draws heavily on Aristotle, and goes so far as to call Aristotle's book Politics the greatest work of political science in history. This places him squarely within the realm of what is called classical political philosophy, a school of thought which goes back largely to the ancient Greek thinker. Another attribute of classical political philosophy is the previously indicated belief that human beings are inherently flawed and the state is therefore needed to overcome the faults in their character. But besides ensuring law and order, this also means actually making its citizens into better people. The state plays a major role in the moral development of its citizens. In fact, von Treitschke goes so far as to write that writers can only be great if they draw directly from the culture of their respective nations. This is summed up in the statement that a great writer must be, quote, a microcosm of his nation. This subtly plays into the statement by Fichte, quoted elsewhere in the book, that the only way for an individual to achieve immortality is to embed himself in the collective memory of his own nation. As you may have noticed, von Treitschke is very fond of nations, which is why he rails against both internationalism, which he sees as lunacy because, as previously mentioned, each nation has its own character, and provincialism, which he sees as obsolete, primitive small-mindedness, which leads to intellectual stagnation. But back to the state. Von Treitschke identifies a further core aspect of the state as an intolerance towards any power above it. According to him, the essence of the state is power, much as the essence of religion is faith and the essence of family is love, since the sovereignty of a state depends on no other power being able to challenge its authority. Von Treitschke does not consider any state which is not the most powerful entity on its territory a state in any real sense. Similarly, a state that cannot wage war because it has no military is not really a state, since it has no true authority. Von Treitschke is actually a huge fan of war, arguing that human greatness and progress is fueled by competition among nations, which also reinvigorates the character of a nation which has descended into decadence. He writes, Misfortune is a tonic to noble nations, but in continued prosperity even they run the risk of innovation. He sees war as something noble, claiming that it is typically fought not for material gain, but for the sake of inherited national honor. In light of all this, I was surprised to find that he was not actually advocating for a totalitarian state. The state von Treitschke wants would be a militarist and autocratic one, but there would still be plenty of areas in its citizens' lives in which it would not interfere. On page 25 he writes that, quote, as it aims only at forming and directing the surface of human existence, it can everywhere take up an attitude of indifference towards the conflicting schools of thought in art, science and religion. It is satisfied so long as they keep the peace. So that's Heinrich von Treitschke for you. I have to say, some of what he outlines in his lectures seems quite reasonable, but there's also a lot of nonsense in the mix which really kills it for me. Often he'll acknowledge an exception to one of his rules, which is so huge that, to me, it disproves the rule. For example, he writes that small states cannot defend their sovereignty against large ones, and admits that Switzerland, the Netherlands and Belgium are exceptions to that rule. That's three states in Central Europe alone. Also, for all his insistence that political science ought to rely on historical observations rather than armchair philosophy, he provides next to no historical ev evidence for outrageous claims like war contributing to the moral edification of a society. In short, I'm not a fan.